It's all about location, location, location. And place branding is key to success of a community, city, or country. And today we're talking about destination branding. I'm with Cumviria, co-chair of the International Place Branding Association's 2024 conference. We're at the fabulous The Siam Hotel at Bangkok's Riverside, and you are watching Trends. Kumviria, can you tell us about the International Place Branding Association that you're associated with? Definitely. International Place Branding Association, or IPBA for short, started because practitioners and academics from all over the world, they want to have an, a, a body, an institution if you like, to work together to promote for the recognition of this field of place branding. Because the field of place branding has been uh, going on for many decades, started primarily in Europe and then all over, the, all over the world. And there are practitioners and academics who do place branding here and there, around about the year 2000. So they decided that they, they want to do something together. Because there are so many researchers writing papers about place branding, city marketing, city branding, so they decided to work together and have a few conferences, small ones and large ones, and they decided that eventually they need to get together to form this organization. And that's what they did, uh, the first conference, because holding annual conference is the main activity of IPBA. And they started the first one back in 2016 in London, then moved to Swansea, moved to Macau, went back to Volos. And then during the COVID-19 pandemic, there was another one in Barcelona, and then the next one in Aix-en-Provence and Helsingborg. And this year in 2024 uh, will be the first time in, in Thailand, in Bangkok, hosted by Jilalongon Business School. And I'll be the co-chair of this event, a local host, if you like. So breaking place branding down into very simple uh, form, I think Las Vegas, gambling. Paris, romance. Um, Switzerland watches, Belgium chocolates. I, I look at places and I have an image and an impression. Is that place branding? Well, what, what you, you mentioned is the, the way that people form a place brand. Place branding is essentially about associations that people have with the place. So that's uh, what a place brand is. And the process of place branding is a little bit more complicated. So basically the process of place branding is about understanding the identity of the place of what you mentioned. Las Vegas is about gambling. Uh, France is about uh, fashion yeah. uh, and beauty and understanding the, the identity in a deep and nuanced way and try to create a, a better image and reputation of a place. So that's what, you know, uh, a very simplified version of what place branding is about. The identity based, uh, identity based practice of bringing the place uh, to create the reputation and image. So that's what place branding is. Now, an, a, a very important thing is to uh, talk about what place branding is not, because that's what's uh, very important. A lot of places worldwide, when they see nice slogans, they see flashy logos, they say, okay, we want that too. So let's do place branding. But when we think about place branding, we have to also think about what it is not. Uh, one, it is not just about logos and slogans. Logos and slogans of places are important, are fun, but not the only thing. Place branding is not just promotional. A lot of people think about just promotional, but actually place branding involves many other things. Stakeholder engagement, working with businesses, try to understand the politics. These are all the uh, part of place branding. And place branding is also not only about tourism. Tourism is important, definitely a destination is, is very important. But when, when you look at any place, a place is not just about a destination because there are, well, people living there too. So it's a place for people to live there, to work, to fall in love, to do business, to start new business, to fall. So these are the, you know, the whole picture of what a place is. So that's what place branding is not. It's not also not a quick fix. 
So you have a problem, okay, let's do place branding for that. That wouldn't work because place branding is more like a marathon for a place to create the you know, positive and strong image and reputation. With the history that I have in tourism, when uh, I think of place branding in the past, I think of it trying to generate tourism and quite often an unknown destination. Let's create a logo, let's create a slogan and that's it and we're away and start marketing. But as you say, it's a lot more. And I suppose you've got to involve the local stakeholders, the local community to buy into what you're trying to achieve. What you just said is the key to place branding, engaging with stakeholders. In the past, people think about, okay, we're going to brand a place. Why? Because we want to get new visitors. Uh, they might think of that as a quick buck that they're going to make the money re real quick by having people coming into the place and they're going to come up with the logos and slogans and do that. And of course, you see places all over the world that try to follow that model. A lot of them fail to over tourism and sometimes they drive over tourism. A lot of people coming to the place that uh, exceed the carrying capacity that they can do. Or sometimes they do it so much that they drive you know, the, the heart and soul of the place, the people who form the identity of the place away. And, and that could be troublesome. So yes, stakeholder engagement, trying to understand the people who live there, who want to come to live there. Uh, and sometimes it's not just about bringing uh, tourists it's bringing new residents because when we consider having one more tourist coming in or having one uh, David Barrett to come and live here the choice is easy for me because for people to come in to invest to live there could create a, a tremendous economic growth in the long run so by the way I'm not saying that tourists are not important not at all they are very important visitors are really important and we need to create our place to be amazing destination but that's uh, one of the facets of what place is about. It's interesting, it's broad ranging from investment to tourism to the community. So it's a win-win-win situation all around then. Definitely, when you look at place, and that's the reason why we use the term branding or marketing for place, because we take the discipline of branding and marketing into place. And if you work in marketing, you know that the, the first uh, people, group of people you have to think about are customers. It's the same as places. Who are the customers? Of course, visitors and tourists are one. Residents, as I mentioned, is another one. Businesses is another group. And also the export customers who buy products and services made from your, from your place. So place branding and place management, place marketing if you like, is to find the right balance between all these stakeholders and external or internal stakeholders that you have to find the right balance. Now you're hosting the 8th IPBA conference in Bangkok this year. What are some of the highlights that you can tease us with about the conference? Definitely. Uh, there are many submissions from scholars all over the world and IPBA is like once a year uh, event that people in this field of place branding because when you think about the field of place branding, we are quite alone academically. We don't have a school of place branding. So people are either in a school of business, sometimes they're in the Department of Tourism, Department of Ge Geography, Public Administration. So once, once a year, they come together and they share what they have been obsessed about in the past year. What have they been thinking, analyzing, and come up with new ideas. So, so we share that. And I believe that this year we're going to see a lot of themes of using digital technologies in place branding. There'll be a lot of that because when you consider place branding and, and branding and marketing in business, branding and marketing in business, they are quite ahead in terms of how they use digital technologies. But place branding, we are catching up really quickly. We're going to see uh, some papers about that. We are also going to see about crisis because we just emerged out of the you know, global pandemic. We're going to see uh, papers talk about place branding during the crisis. Uh, we also want to see the positive side. For example, using sports as the element to do place branding. We see a number of that. And of course, uh, cultural heritage, culture, gastronomy. And we're also going to debate uh, quite a bit about the theory of place branding. That's what academics do. But these are some of the, the themes, if you like, that we might see in this year conference. Is sustainability an element uh, that needs to be considered when you're branding a place? Definitely. Uh, sustainability has been such an important topic for uh, 
so many scholars in so many places. Of course, when you talk about sustainability, it might start and originate uh, in Europe, as in you know, the narratives that they have. But right now, you imagine how, how many cities in China that try to brand itself as such too. And of course, in Thailand, we are trying to, to move towards that. But I think the challenge in sustainability and place branding is that even though sustainability or sustainable development, SDG, ESG, whatever you like, are very broad, but the, the issues are very contextualized in the cities that we live in. Of course, we talk about the greenhouse gas and carbon emission and all that, but you consider places like Chiang Mai and northern regions in, in Thailand during the winter season, when PM 2.5 came in, that kind of change the whole narrative about what sustainability looks like because we actually can see it, the problem. Um, and of course, uh, the part about society and economic, uh, also a very important part of sustainability too. Because when we think about sustainability, we often think about ecological sustainability or environmental aspect, which are really important. But the problem with society or economic growth, economic uh, recession, also part of sustainability that we can consider incorporating that into how we brand our places too, yes. So sustainability, very important, but it be, be, begins to be more contextualized and that make it a lot more interesting and meaningful. Does Chula Longkorn University have a course on place branding and destination marketing? Um, not really in Julangon uh, Business School because I'm from uh, Mahidon University International okay. College, but I work with Julangon Business School to host this uh, event together. AI playing a, an increasing role in place branding, or that's interesting of you to to bring that up because uh, wherever I am in every walks of life, people keep talking about AI, AI this, AI that. But in place branding, AI has not been uh, the major factor that we saw yet, at least in the past couple of years. But there are some papers, some research about using AI, because, for example, we talk about logos and slogans, and AIs are very good at that, yes. at generating logos and slogans. I published and presented a paper last year in, and, and talked about it in Helsingborg, the use of AI. Uh, in designing logos and slogans, how we can democratize. Because when you think about designing logos and slogans in place branding, we often think about you know, high paying consultants who come in and come up with you know, nice stuff and cities pay a lot of money for them. So we say, why don't we use AI to democratize that right now everyone can design logos and slogans. And that would kind of give, empower the people to think about, okay, this is my place, this is my city, and this is how I want it to look like. And everyone can, can, can do that too. So our AI has a role in that. That could be very interesting in my opinion. Great. With your involvement in place branding, um, do you have a case study that you should, could share with us? What place has been successful in leveraging the branding and ultimately having a success, whether in terms of uh, new residents, investment, or tourism? Definitely. In the past many years that I joined IPBA, I joined every IPBA conference except the one in Barcelona that I couldn't travel because of the COVID. So we get to know about places, interesting places all over the world and the cases, good cases, bad cases. And there are so many that came to my mind. Some that I could think of is an example of Oslo, the capital of Norway. Yeah. And when people say Oslo, um, People who, who work for a brand Oslo had an issue that when people talk about Oslo, they, they don't really think of much. Unfortunately, it doesn't have like a clear identity. So that's a challenge for, for Oslo to try to shape the brand in the minds of the international audience. And they have a, a whole interesting strategy of how to do that. And we think about Tasmania. Uh, last year, I listened to the case about Tasmania in Australia which is really interesting. And in that case, uh, the place brand of Tasmania is not primarily for tourists, but mainly for the local business. And the goal, maybe they didn't explicitly say that, but the goal from what I heard is to create this civic pride in the local businesses to instill the brand of Tasmania in the things that they create. So that it not only increased 
the pride, but also increase the value, monetary value of the products that they created to. And we learned about many cities in China you would be amazed by how much they not only totally adopt digital technology but embrace digital technology in its entirety and using TikTok. You, you might not really associate cities with TikTok. You might think about, you know, teenagers, influencers. You, no, cities, they embrace and they use a lot of TikTok and make a lot of cities become internet sensations that they really compete on using this platform. They don't call it TikTok in China, it's Douyin, but that's what they did. We also learned about many countries that have the problems with negative stereotypes uh, and how we can come up with communication strategies to combat uh, negative stereotypes. We also heard about the case of Switzerland. You mentioned earlier about Switzerland and we heard about the case of how regions try to compete to bring business and investor to come to their regions but that's not an easy process. Even the Swiss uh, can't do it easily. So these are the global cases that we, we, we keep uh, learning and sharing and discussing from the experts from all over the world at IPBA. What's your story with uh, the journey of place branding? How did you get involved in this area? That's very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm Thai. So we, you know, tourism is, is very important for us. Yeah. Tourism is very important. So. Uh, around 10 years ago, I started researching and writing about tourism marketing, destination marketing. And then I stumbled upon this field of place branding. And, and that's, that's quite a, a simple hook that get me hooked into this, that places are more than just tourism. And, and it's true. Tourism is important, but place is more than just tourism. And that got me thinking and reading and researching and writing and then I join all the conferences that I can get my hands on in this place branding and then I work with IPBA I work with another institutions called IPM and you know the evolution of this field and I see myself as growing with this field too because 10 years ago when you go to conference academics there's one thing in their minds that they, 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 they keep talking that place branding is not just about logos and slogans Place branding is not just about logos and slogans. So that was 10 years ago. And the field has matured, become a lot more mature. And the theoretical foundation has become a lot more uh, stronger than it was 10 years ago. And that's uh, my journey with place branding and see how it has developed over time. So with your eighth conference in Bangkok this year, um, when is it? Where is it? And how many delegates do you expect to, to have at the conference? The eighth annual conference of IPBA will be hosted by Tulalogon Business School uh, from the 30th of October to the 1st of November. And it will be hosted at Tulalogon University. And we expect uh, a little bit fewer than 100 uh, delegates from all over the world. And I think that's the, that's the right about the, the perfect number to have enough people but not too many that you feel overwhelmed so that's that's our event it's very niche and very specialist so it's a perfect size for a conference isn't it it is yeah. because when you join big conference you go to the ones with 300 400 people 500 or more you you're just you don't know where you are unless you are like the top professor that everyone knows that people go talk to you if you are uh, people like me new uh, scholars no one will will talk to you, but, but here you get a chance to, to talk to everyone. I think that's a perfect size. Now, now you're involved in the um, academic side. Do you ever get involved on the commercial side of place branding where a destination may bring you on board and then you advise them? That's also a very interesting remark. Because in Thailand, in the past, people keep talking about destination marketing, destination branding for good reason. And, and that's appropriate for, for Thailand. But this year, 2024, I kept hearing more about city branding. I kept hearing more about provinces try to do city branding. Yes. And now they invite me to be involved. And 
if you if you know academics, academics are in a cocoon, and we enjoy being in our cocoon, and I keep writing papers, writing dozens of papers, research, and get to know the international community. But in Thailand, not so much because whenever I think of Thailand, oh, it's just destination. But this year, it, the trend has shifted uh, significantly, and now I travel to uh, many provinces, to c h a n t a b u r i to p a t a l u n g and to many more in the future. Because all of them start to to take notice of what place branding or city branding is about. Keep up the great work. I wish you great success with the eighth conference that uh, you're involved in as co-chair. Great that it's in Bangkok this year. Brilliant work. Thank you so much for coming along and having the conversation with Trends today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching this episode of Trends. See you next week.